Stalin was born as Joseph or Josip Jugashvili on 6 December 1878. As a child, he was also called Soso. He was born in a small town of Gori in Georgia, in the North Caucasus on the outskirts of the Russian Empire. I will show you three maps uh, in order to uh, explain where Georgia was. This is uh, a map of Europe. Uh, the yellow big country is Russia, of course. If you look at the Black Sea, Georgia is uh, uh, a green patch to the east of Black Sea. Here is Russia, contemporary Russia, and Georgia, and other countries which were part of the former Russian Empire or former Soviet Union. Here you can also see Georgia as a light green, uh, light green patch again immediately to the east of the Black Sea. And here is finally Georgia uh, with all its regions. And here what you can see is uh, right at the center a uh, bluish greenish region uh, where Gori is. It is not far from the capital, Tbilisi or Tiflis as it was called uh, at that time, uh, but it is not even a capital. Stalin's roots were extremely modest. His mother, Keke or Catherine uh, Giladze, was a daughter of serfs. His father was a cobbler. Both the literate, however, and Bissarion, Stalin's father, could speak several languages, including Russian. When Joseph was still a small boy, his father started drinking and sometimes beat his wife and son. Some historians blame Stalin's later cruelty and vindictiveness on his difficult childhood. There is no direct proof of that. True, Sosa was not a healthy child. One of his numerous illnesses was smallpox. It left pock marks on his face for the rest of his life. His left arm was severely damaged and never functioned properly. Two toes on his left foot were joined. And, of course, all this could not have been missed in a boy's company. Yet, Soso, here he is, a small boy, uh, managed to keep on equal footing with his friends. And besides, uh, some of them were much worse off and much less well endowed than him. Uh, here is the Jugashvili family home. Uh, it is now part of the Stalin Museum in Gori. Keke managed to keep the house well. She rose to the task of bringing up her son on her own. She became a dressmaker uh, and was able to provide for the boy. So the house was modest, but decent and dignified. This is the Gori Museum, Stalin Gori Museum. Now, you can see that this small uh, house is inside, covered uh, completely uh, by the roof. Uh, but the museum itself is huge. Keke's dream was that Joseph would become a priest. She was very religious. She managed to get him admitted to the Gori Theological School. By then he already spoke Russian. He needed it because this was the language of instruction at the school. His Russian was good, but he retained his Georgian accent until the end of his life. While Joseph was still at school, his father left Gori and the family for good. This might have ended Joseph's studies because the family did not have enough money. But the boy was an exemplary student, so his mother managed to find financial assistance to keep him at school. 
Joseph worked hard. He had an excellent memory. He was diligent, he was disciplined, and he was well-dressed. He sang in the church choir and was a fine reader of prayers. He developed a passion for reading. He read voraciously throughout his life. According to some accounts later in his life, he could read up to 500 pages a day. He graduated in 1894 as a top student with a recommendation to the Tbilisi Tiflis Theological Seminary. Tiflis, as I said, was the capital of Georgia.